Today I want to show you how to make this collapsible, I call it a saw table. Uh, it's one sheet of three quarter inch plywood that's been cut into strips that kind of form a grid and they sit on top of two saw horses. So the whole thing is collapsible. There's no glue, there's no screws uh, holding any of this together. And so it's really easy to load up in the back of the truck or where I've loaded it up in the back of my car. Take it to wherever you need to cut up some sheet goods and set it up, make all your cuts. This is essentially sacrificial. So if your circular saw, if you have it cutting a little too deep, who cares? Um, it's, it's not meant to be pretty. It's completely uh, for utility. I like to break down sheet goods this way uh, because I just, I don't like handling sheet goods at the table saw by myself. With this, I don't have to worry about that. So it makes it really easy to take care of sheet goods and it's easy to store because the whole thing collapses. The sawhorses, at least th these ones, fold up. Um, so let me show you how I made it. So to start out with, you're gonna need some sawhorses. These are the ones I like to use. I got these at Home Depot. I don't know if they sell them anymore, but they're made out of steel and they can hold something crazy like, I don't know, like half a ton or a ton. I don't remember, but it's a lot. Anyway, this is what we're gonna start with and I'm gonna throw down some two by fours so that I have somewhere I can start cutting up this sheet without hitting the metal. To do this, we need to take this full sheet of plywood, 48 inches by 96, and we're gonna need to cut it into eight equal strips as close as we can get. I'm gonna use my track saw because that's what I have, but there's no reason you couldn't do this with a straight edge and a regular circular saw. And with the blade that I have, it leaves a 3 30 seconds kerf. So for our measurements, we need eight strips. We've got a 3 30 seconds kerf. So I'm taking the 48 inches that this is wide and I'm going to be subtracting seven cuts because seven cuts will give me eight strips. 7 times 3 30 seconds is 21 30 seconds. Subtracting that from 48 gives me 47 and 11 30 seconds. 11 30 seconds is 0.34375. Taking all of this and dividing it by 8, which gives us 5.9129 blah 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 blah. Um, I'm going to call this 5 and, and just a hair under 15 sixteenths. And if I can get everything lined up, that should give us pretty darn close to even strips. Here's where our first cut is gonna be, and we're just gonna repeat all the way across till I've got eight strips. Four of those strips are gonna get cut in half this way to be 48 inches long and you know, just a hair under six inches wide. And then they're all gonna connect. So I've taken four of those strips and cut them in half, so we've now got eight. And the next step is going to be to draw out and cut out kind of a receiver hole where these pieces can interlock together. It just needs to be the thickness of the plywood, maybe a hair over to make it easier to put together and take apart. And it needs to be half the width of each of these strips. We need to have four cut into this because we're going to have four long pieces. So each of these eight needs to get four cuts, and then the four pieces that go lengthwise are going to need eight cuts each. I'm going to use the jigsaw for this. I think what I'm going to go with for this outer edge, I'm going to go four inches in, and then three inches deep. These are a little under six inches, so it's not going to be perfectly flush. But for what we're using this for, I think that's totally fine. And 
And my gap between these is about 38 and a quarter. I'm going to divide that by three. And that should give me my two spots for the next few cuts. For that, I'm going to try 12 and 5 eighths on each side and see what we end up with. See how that looks. Yeah, I think that'll work. What I am going to do though is have this be the inside edge. Now, depending on how you're going to cut this, whether you're going to use the jigsaw or whatever, there's there's several ways to do this to try to speed it up, keep it accurate. I mean, obviously, you can just go through and mark these same measurements on all of the pieces, and that'll be just fine. You are going to spend a lot of time marking, though. Uh, you could, if you have a long enough blade, clamp these together and just cut through two, three, however, however long of a cut capacity you have and batch them out. Another thing you could do is mark out one like I've done, cut it out and then use that as a template to then go through, mark everything else and cut them out individually. One thing I am going to do at these corners is I am going to drill some holes so that I can get a nice straight edge here with my jigsaw. The blade that I've got installed doesn't do curves very well. So though I could like start here and come all the way into this corner, and then come the opposite way, it's going to be kind of tough to really get this nice and flat. So, where these don't need to be pretty, they just need to be functional. I am going to drill holes here big enough to drop that blade through. Now, if you wanted to get these like really, really straight, you could use your speed square as an edge. I'm not super concerned about it. almost forgot it's easier if you drill the holes first And that's all there is to it. So the method I'm going to use is I am just going to use this as a template to mark out all the rest. When you do that, one thing to keep in mind is you're now marking, your, your line is going to be further inset than your original lines. So whereas here I was heading right down the middle of the line, all these subsequent pieces I'm going to cut just to the outside to try to make up for that difference and have enough wiggle room for these to go together easy. Something else I thought of as I was cutting these, you really don't need to drill two holes. We only have one cut that we need to make this direction. So when you're laying these out, just cut one hole. It'll make it easier to see the line and it'll be half the drilling. Now for the long pieces, I'm gonna follow the same measurements, at least for the ends. I'm gonna come in four inches from either edge and cut those slots there and then I'm going to try to evenly space six more in between those. So here's what I've worked out. These long pieces are 96 inches long. I already cut in two slots that were in four inches and they're three quarter inches wide so I'm times in that by two, nine and a half. Subtracting that nine and a half from the 96 gives me 86 and a half and dividing that by seven gives me 12.357, I'm going to call that 12 and 3 eighths. And I'm going to measure from the inside edge and then this 12 and 3 eighths, I think I'm just going to use that as a center point 
and then go three eighths off either side. Okay, those slots are cut. So now I need to figure out a slot, a much shallower and wider slot to fit over the top of the sawhorse. And this is going to give this whole table a solid place to sit and not scoot side to side. I think I'm going to put mine in the center of this spot here in between the second and third slots. And the reason for that is the sawhorses have their legs coming out at an angle. If you get it too close to the outside edge, then that could be a trip hazard, which I'm sometimes clumsy. I prefer to avoid that. But having it here, I think, should give me a good balance between minimizing the chance of hitting those legs and also having the weight when there is something on the table distributed well enough that you don't have to worry about the table flipping one way or the other. So we'll try this out. And if it doesn't work, I could always move it. Now, the other thing to keep in mind before you start marking and cutting, this side is up. So the, uh, the slot for the sawhorses needs to come off of this side. So here's what I settled on. I drew a line in the center between these two. I believe that was five and three quarters from this inside edge. And then for the slot to go on top of the sawhorses, the sawhorses are almost exactly four inches wide. I want a little bit of play. So I drew this out about four and an eighth inches wide and an inch tall. So that way there's a little bit of wiggle room to get this onto the sawhorse. And now I'll just mirror that on the other end, cut these two out, and then I'll have my template to cut the remaining three. All right, and at this point, all the cutting is done. So what I'm gonna do next is get these two by fours out of here and show you how this all comes together and why I find these helpful in the first place. One thing to account for that I didn't mention earlier is how long your sawhorses are. So the way I'm setting this up where the edges come in four inches, but your side piece, your short pieces are 48 inches, taking four inches off of each side, plus this uh, kerf here, that's four and three quarters of an inch that's being taken off, and we're doing that on both sides. So we're talking nine and a half inches being removed from the 48 inch length. So what that means is if the distance from here to here is less than the length of your short pieces minus this distance, these won't be long enough to hold the outer pieces. And in my case, that length there is 38 inches, but really, for the way I have mine set up, I need it to be minimum 38 and a half. So what I'm going to do is just bolt on a four foot length of two by four here and down there. The other thing you could do alternatively is you would want to take your first slot on either end and adjust that. So if these sawhorses were too short, then you could bring these cuts further in so that the outer long pieces don't go past this edge here. So I'll just cut two, two 48 inch pieces of two by four and from the underside I'll run a couple screws up into those. Two by fours are screwed in place. So now put down the first two long pieces. Since these slots that I cut were for this width here, and the 2x4 is a little narrower, there is going to be some slot, but I think it'll be fine. Ta-da! 
to the place. Having you got to get just one in place, and that'll make it a lot easier to get all the rest of them situated. That's it. That is a saw table. I want to show you why I like to have one of these around. One of the nice things is now that it's all cut, it uh, comes apart, goes back together fairly easily. When you take it apart, it'll fold down into a, a pretty small package. Um, you'll have eight short pieces and then the four long pieces that will all bundle down really small. And then the saw horses also fold up. I don't know if Home Depot still sells these. I'll see if I can find a link for them. I don't know what brand they are. I've had them for years, but in this particular application, they work really well. And another thing that's nice is with this style of saw horse, the legs are actually extendable. Each leg has a carriage bolt on it that a wing nut you can take off, and the leg is actually in two pieces. You can slide the loose piece up and down to adjust the height. I'm not very tall, so I keep it at the lowest setting. And if I'm using my track saw, to cut, although to cross cut a piece of plywood, having it at that lower height works well for me. But if you're tall, then obviously you can adjust that really easily. Another thing that I like with this is if, you, uh, if you're using the jigsaw or a router or anything where you need to be able to, you're going to be cutting all the way through, depending on the size of the cut that you need to do, you can position your piece that you're going to cut such that the cutting is going to happen in between these supports, and then that way you don't have to worry about hitting into a workbench or, or anything like that. Um, if you did accidentally do it, this whole thing is meant to be sacrificial. Uh, it gets some cuts in it, so what? It's a saw table. Eventually you are going to wear it out. You buy a sheet of plywood, you make another one. Let's see it in action. Perfect. Thank you. If you're curious how strong it is, I'm not little and it's not even creaking. So for cutting down sheet goods, this thing is plenty strong. And that's it. That is the saw table. One word of caution though, if it's going to be in a common area like your garage and you're still in the middle of moving in and you have a bunch of plywood for some kitchen cabinets that you're building for the old house, try to get through this stuff quick because otherwise you're going to end up with stuff for the chickens and art supplies and more stuff for the chickens just kind of in the way. So try not to do that. Anyway, thanks for watching and if you want to see more of the stuff I make in my shop, please subscribe. And we'll see you next time.